A logo is a great way for you to show the world, hey, this is who I am. And when paired together with animation, it can start to tell a complete story of who you are. Today, we're going to learn how to design a logo, bring it to life in Illustrator, and animate it in After Effects. Let's do this. Hey all, my name is Matthew Corrales, and I'm a freelance graphic designer, video editor, and motion designer. Today, we're going to be talking about how to come up with a unique logo design that not only stands out from the crowd, but is also connected to you as an artist. We're going to be starting from the ground floor, coming up with some sketches and bringing those into Illustrator to polish up our designs. Then we're going to choose a design, storyboard out some of the ideas for animation, and create a really awesome animated logo that you can then use on your website, reel, or wherever you want to showcase it. And if you want to, check out the link in the description below to download some free worksheets so you can follow along with the steps in this tutorial. Before we move on, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the like button if you're finding this video helpful. This helps us focus on creating more content that you all enjoy. The ideation phase. To keep things simple here, we're going to focus on coming up with a logo design that uses our initials. Here are some examples from a few of our awesome School of Motion alumni. Aside from using just your initials, you have free reign in your design and can incorporate your own shapes or symbols or play around with just the type to see what you can come up with. We're going to start by setting a timer here for 10 minutes and kick things off by doing some good old fashioned sketching. We wanna use this time to come up with as many ideas for our logo design as possible. Don't get held up on any one idea, just keep sketching and ideating. It's okay if you have some rough concepts. The point of pushing through and continuing to sketch is to get past the stuff that's on the surface, the more obvious ideas. We really wanna do some digging here and come up with a design that resonates with us on a deeper level. And in turn, it's going to be a much more powerful logo. Now that we've had some time to ideate, let's look back at some of the logo designs that we really like. See what stands out to you. What catches your eye? What's more experimental or interesting to look at? What says the most about you as an artist? Try to only circle three designs. We're going to take these three designs and build upon them inside of Illustrator. The design phase. Okay, we made it into Illustrator. During this stage, I want you to import your chosen logos and lay them out on 1920 by 1080 size boards. When you start up a new project in Illustrator, you can create a custom sized artboard with settings that you can manually adjust, or you could choose from one of the many presets already available in Illustrator. Depending on what you're creating, you may want to choose a specific preset. I like to go with the web large 1920 by 1080 preset for logo projects and change the number of artboards in my project before I start. So each logo has a separate board. The beauty of Illustrator is that it's a vector-based program, meaning things won't get pixelated like they do when you're scaling back and forth like they would in a normal rasterized image inside of Photoshop. We want to start off with creating a really strong logo concept that doesn't need a lot of flair to stand out. Your logo should be powerful enough to stand on its own and tell the same story, whether it's in black and white or in color. As you're designing your logos, start to think about what it could look like in motion. Does your logo have some interesting lines or shapes built into it that you could picture moving around? Maybe you see some of the types stretching and animating on screen in some really cool ways. A big reason we started this phase off with three logos is so that we have some options to choose from. We may realize that as we're starting to flesh out one of our designs, we could play around with the shape some more and push the design a bit. Or we may realize that one of our ideas isn't working as well as we'd hope, and we want to stick with one of our other concepts. By the end of the section, you should have one design that you feel really strongly about. That really represents you and sticks out. With my logo, I wanted to create something that had a bit of contrast and also reflected both of my styles of design, which is why I went with a mix of bold and thin type. It's just about time to bring our design to After Effects, but first we need to make sure our files are nice and organized so it's easier for us to import and animate. At this point, I like to save a duplicate of my file to ensure I keep all of my old designs intact in case I want to revisit any later. Then I'll go into my other copy and delete everything but my final design so that it's all neat and tidy too. If you have any blank layers, be sure to delete those as they'll just get in the way. Be sure to name your layers just so you know which pieces are which when you're inside of After Effects. Hope you're enjoying this tutorial so far. While we won't be diving into a ton of specific animation techniques today, School of Motion does offer several great courses to help you advance your design and animation skills, no matter what level you're at. If your journey is just beginning, After Effects Kickstart is a great place to start. How about if you're new to Illustrator and want to learn some of the basic concepts of design? Check out Photoshop and Illustrator Unleashed. All of the links are in the description below. Now, let's get back into it. Before we start plugging away in After Effects, we need to plan out our animation a bit. Even if your logo is just text-based, there are so many ways that you can not only show off your animation skills, but give your audience a bit more insight into the kind of person and creative you are. We want to ask ourselves a few questions. How is the logo going to animate on and off screen? How will all the shapes and text interact with one another, if at all? Do we want to include any secondary animations to reinforce some of the motion we have? 
As you examine your logo, all of those fine little details, see how you can use those to your advantage and come up with a few frames to help you visualize the flow of your animation. I like the design between three to six quick frames. These are only for reference, so roughing them out is totally okay. It's important to visualize the path of your animation before jumping right into After Effects. Here are some of the sketches I put together. I wanted to take advantage of the weight of the M in my animation, so I envisioned it stretching onto the screen here. After the M slides in, I wanted to have the J and C come in a bit more chaotically to complement the glitches in my animation. The J is going to drop down from the top of the screen and bounce around the M, changing size slightly after each move. And finally, the C is going to drop down from the top as well, which I plan to emphasize with a bit of stretching and extra glitching. The animation phase. Finally, we're inside of After Effects. So what we want to do is import our project into After Effects as a composition and choose layer size. Doing this will help preserve the sizing and position of each of your layers from Illustrator. You can use the existing layers that you imported from your Illustrator project if you're looking to do some simpler animations like moving your text around on screen or using masks. But one of the great things about using Illustrator layers in After Effects is the ability to convert them into shape layers. Simply select the layers you want to convert and choose Layer, Create, Create Shapes from Vector Layer. This ensures that your graphics stay nice and crisp and give you more flexibility if you're looking to manipulate the actual shapes in your design. Shape layers come in handy if you're looking to add some additional animation or morphing to the shapes of your letters, which is what I plan on doing with the letters in my animation. Now that we've got all the logistics out of the way, we can start to animate. If you're new to After Effects, that's totally okay. You can still create a really fun animation just by adding some simple movement or stretching to your text. Now for me, I love horror, and a lot of my design work is on the grungier side, so I want my animation to speak to that a bit. What I'm going to do is give my logo a bit of a glitch effect and break it up a bit, just like I did in my storyboard. First, I'm going to create a new solid layer. Go up to the top bar, click Layer, New, and Solid. Or you could use the keyboard shortcut, Command-Y. You can make the solid any color. Next, go up to the top toolbar and go to Effect, Noise and Grain, and select Fractal Noise. Whenever I'm working with this kind of effect, I like to set the Fractal Type to Max and Noise to Block. Toggle down the Transform menu and go to Scaling. Be sure to uncheck Uniform Scaling, as all we want to do here is scale the glitch horizontally. I like to set the scale width to about 6000. We're going to get fancy for a second here and add a really quick expression to our evolution so it can continue to change over time, giving us a randomly generated glitch effect. Right click the stopwatch next to evolution, then head on down to your timeline and type in the expression time asterisk 1500. Click out of the expression window and pre-compose your glitch map layer. Be sure to name it. What you want to do next is create a new adjustment layer by going up to the toolbar and clicking layer, new, adjustment layer and place it above your noise layer. Then head up to Effect, Distort, and select Displacement Map. This is how we're going to control our glitch effect. Click on Displacement Map Layer under your effect and select your noise layer. To see your effect, just be sure to toggle your noise layer off. This creates a connection between your adjustment layer and glitch layer. Now you can customize your glitch using the max horizontal and vertical displacement sliders. I want to randomize the glitches a bit, so I'll actually go in and chop up my adjustment layer and place it over select areas of the text. Your adjustment layer is always going to be connected to your glitch map layer, so no matter where you chop it up, it's always going to have that effect. You can choose to keep the glitch going as long as you want, or you could chop it up just like I'm doing here. As you begin to animate, remember, this is your logo, and it should reflect you as much as possible. Since we're working in just black and white here, we may feel a bit limited with what we could do with our animation. However, as you start to explore a bit more, you'll start to see there are a lot of things you can play around with. Scaling, opacity, position moves, and more complicated looking effects like some of the glitching and stretching I have going on here. If you're up for a bonus challenge, see how you can make your animation loop in a really fun way. Once you've had time to sit in After Effects for a bit, and you have an animated version of your logo that you're happy with, it's time to export. I like to render my videos right out of After Effects using the H.264 format. So here's where I ended up with my logo design and animation. I think it says a lot about me and who I am. As a person, I tend to be a little quiet, but once you get to know me, I have a lot of hobbies and interests that would surprise people. I love simple geometric art, but I also love bold grungy art, which is why I decided to go with a mix of thin and bold sans serif type, in addition to having some really loud, aggressive animation. I'm hoping you can look at your logos and see all the things that they say about you. Remember, you could always go back in and build upon the designs you made here today. As you continue developing your logo, you could start to explore colors, textures, more complex animations to get the feel you're really after. 
This exercise was really meant to get your creative juices flowing and give you a structure to follow whenever you're tasked with creating and animating a logo. Well, I think that just about wraps things up here. Before you go, be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel so that you can catch more tutorials like this one as they're released. Your logo is a powerful representation of you, and it's also something that's going to continue to evolve over time as you continue to grow your skill set, explore your passions, and also expand upon your creativity as an artist. We want to see what you came up with for your final logo designs and animations, so feel free to share them on social media and tag us. Don't forget to include your sketches too. And let us know in the comments below where you gathered some of your inspiration from. If you're interested in learning more about design and animation, head on over to schoolofmotion.com to learn more about our courses. If you have any questions or are interested, be sure to reach out to the team. Thanks for watching, everybody. Take care.